Peter. Hi, Mark. Welcome to Pratt Whitney Flight Thank Test you very Facility. Much. So, first of all, I'd like to show you uh, FTB4. Yeah. But uh, we do not allow a lot of people inside the facility, so it's a privilege for me to be able to show you yeah. so people can see what we do and how we do and how we certify the engines. Yeah. What you see here is FTB4. That's our uh, second flying test bed, Boeing 747. We have two. This aircraft can fly all the engines of 20,000 pounds of thrust or less. So the way we do it is we have pylons. So each program will have a designated pylon that we attach an engine. Then with the ILE, the installation the equipment that you see. On the side of the aircraft. We basically yeah. grab the full yeah. pylon, the yeah. engine. We roll it and we attach it on the four lugs that you have there. Yeah. Once it's attached, we have quick connect where we can connect all the fuel, the hydraulics, the temperatures and all the measurements of instrumentation. It goes inside the aircraft, then it's controlled. Now on this aircraft, the pilot has no control on the engine, none whatsoever. A pilot not having control on the engine? No, no How control. How does they feel, Mark? They don't like it very much. Okay, it's pretty, uh, I believe so. But they have the controls of the four other ones. Okay. The pilot doesn't control the number two engine. He only has that control on takeoff and landing. Okay. Once we're airborne, the gears are up, the control of the engine is transferred from the pilot and goes into the cabin to the test engineer. Then we start the real flight test mission. Now, if you're interested, I have some more to show you so we can go on the other side. Absolutely. Okay. You'll see on the other side the, um, the way the aircraft is positioned in the hangar. So to me, it was very special. I flew the first time the C-Series in reality. Yeah. How is it to fly first time Off a new the... engine that has never been airborne? And when you do flight tests, the engine comes to us and it has to be tested and proven. So there's a lot of dwell zones, there's a lot of instrumentation, there's a lot of limits that we have that you won't see. Because ah. we're experimenting certain cavities within the engine, we're yeah. experimenting certain temperature range that the engine can actually operate on, yeah. and we're, we're pushing it to the limit. For a pilot, our crews can't use number two initially. So when they do their takeoff, the performance is on three on engines. Three engine, it's yeah. a very stable, yeah. but uh, the, the captain's going to have the power of the engine for takeoff and landing only if he needs it. The, so how, uh, how many hours do you invest? Uh, yours was a good uh, 18 to 12 months of, a, of dedicated teams only working on preparing. It was the first gear turbofan that we flew. The Bombardier series was the was first the one. the first one being yeah. put on that aircraft. I remember having the team of Bombardier over here because they wanted to look how we installed the engine. Yeah. We'll go inside and I'll show you more about the airplane. Oh, even with a plastic curtain, what is that one for? Uh, you'll see once we get inside. It's, okay. Uh, once we power up all the uh, instrumentation, it gets extremely hot. So we got to cool Whoa. the aircraft and keep the inside of the aircraft below uh, 80 degrees, otherwise we have a shutdown because of the amount of, the amount of instrumentation, instrumentation in the computer. aircraft. So both these aircraft, when they were modified, originally they weren't built as flying test bed. We, we did all the engineering work, we converted them to a flying test bed, and this one actually was in Air China. You can still see the uh, lighter on the top. Ah, so we did, no, yeah. It was an old uh, Air China tweet. The yeah. other one is from, it was a Korean Air uh, aircraft, okay. and Korean just bought uh, the C-Series also. Yeah. So I think we but shared a good well, product. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so this is the inside. Wow. Well, we call it a uh, miniature uh, test cell that flies in the air. It's all computer banks. Yeah. Each of the rows have their own functions. Like here, what we've got is we measure the pressure. First uh, C-Series, if I remember right, we had about uh, 200, 250 to 400 points of different pressure. Because a pressure point within the engine at a, special, uh, a specific uh, area doesn't have the same uh, value or power as if you measure it in different areas. So that's what we're looking at. So you can measure each different pressure points within the engine? Within the engine, probes there's, and everything. there's probes that goes in and will give us, like uh, we have a combustion chamber pressure, yeah. we'll have naturally the pressure we have in different stages of the compressors. And once it's analyzed from mm -hmm. the uh, computer, it's going to go in our data acquisition system and it gets distributed to the engineers on board the aircraft. So when we fly, we'll have 14 individuals in the back that are monitoring that and the total team uh, with the, the crews were uh, 70. When we do a uh, passover of production engine, we have probably 150 points that we measure. Yeah. When we do uh, engine, like in the first series, we have uh, close to 10,000 different points 10, that, different were, points. that are coming in and they're being monitored. That gives trust in your data. <laughs> yes. In the back over here, what you'll see is where we will control the engine. Okay. Once we're stabilized and the gears are up, that's about 500 feet or 1,000 feet, depending on the mission, then from a switch in the cockpit, the power gets transferred over here to the test engineer. So he will control the engine based on specific criteria and test mission that we've got. 
So the panel that you see here, the touchscreen, represents what you would see oh, in your cockpit. Similar with that, yeah, yeah. the C-series. Huh? Exactly. Simulated, yeah. Primary control of the engines so are displayed here. Well. Yeah. Everything that is uh, wired, that's hot wired, is everything that's emergency, fire, ah, if we want okay. to discharge the bottle. Because if Cut we off. have a computer failure, yeah. we want to make sure that we can still distinguish the fire. Because yeah. we have fire bottles in the pylon and on the engine. Okay. Uh, so the pilot basically depends, so he owns sort of three engines. He owns three engines. And the engineer owns one engine. This one. You have four engineers here only controlling this one. One engine. Yeah. When we did the flight test, we had the original engineer of East Hartford that built the engine and followed the engine within its yeah. certification, within the test cell. So he joins uh, us and normally he's going to sit here. Yeah. And he's, if ever we get in a situation that we're wondering what's happening, if they start doing the test cell, we stop, yeah. we briefed, and then we decide do we continue or do we abort? Or do we go to the next one? Our flight test is going to last between six to seven hours. When you, go, Whoa, when you stretch it to eight long. hours, oh, it is long. The, the crews are exhausted when they yeah. come back because you, you have to understand, we have to optimize the fuel. If they want high, uh, high altitude yeah, flight, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll start doing the low. We'll burn our fuel, we'll go in the high altitude. Yeah. That means once we're at the high altitude, the yeah. 40, 42,000, then we're starting to come back in. So they're gonna align the aircraft that when we're landing, we're gonna do the last sequence of the test car, which could be low, low altitude flight and landing in with uh, the engine mm -hmm. in various uh, configuration. And how many test pilots do you have, or flight test pilots? Do we you have, have uh, four, four flight test pilots. Four flight we test pilots. We have a lead and we have three. Yeah. Then we have two flight engineers, because this is a, it's a classic 747, yeah. so you have a flight engineer inside the, the cockpit yeah. with them. And when we'll go to the cockpit, I'll show you the different uh, controls that they've got. Because what we wanted to do also is to make sure that the cockpit, even if it's a flying test bed, is representative of what a classic 747 pilot is going to encounter. So if he walks into the airplane, he's not uh, disoriented. Ah, it's, because it looks of all exactly the exactly instrumentation. All the rest that we had to put in. The other aircraft that you saw with the engine on top, we still have to extinguish a fire, so we added additional fire handles. Yeah. But they were, they're installed, you have one, two, three, four, and the fifth one is on the side. Yeah. So he knows if ever you have smoke in the, in the cabin, yeah. he knows that in the cockpit, he knows he can grab it and just pull it. And could I just hire with you to say, here, I'm an airline pilot, I have a 747 rating, I want to be now a we'd, test we'd pilot? Give, we'd give you a bit of, of training, but you could do it, yes. And, and is there also an engineering background required before for the test not pilots? Not necessarily. The, okay. Because the way we do our flight test is the pilot is responsible of giving us the the profile that we need. Okay. So he's really, he's the, the conductor yeah. of the sequence. He does the first step. He yeah. gives us what we need, yeah. altitude, speed, yeah. uh, performance of yeah. the aircraft, or bank, because when we do uh, inlet distortion, yeah. or we try to stall the engine, he's going to be controlling it. Then from here, they'll do the rest. What we're looking for as a pilot, though, is somebody that is uh, going to be able to adapt very quickly yeah. And we're looking, which is not always easy for pilots. So, yeah. <laughs> so he adapts quickly. Yeah. Because sometimes the engineers come and says, I want to do this. Yeah. I'm going to fly in this angle. Yeah. The, the question is, what, what are you trying to extract? Yeah. And what they're good at is understanding, okay, if you want this, I can give it to you, but yeah. at different means, at different ways. Ah. So the, the, the flight test cars are a coordination between the requirement of the engineer yeah. and what and the and aircraft the can, can do. Fly, yeah. So they, the pilots give that interface. Yeah. And we've got uh, six more engineers that are flying on board. So okay. we'll just go in the back and I'll show you the rest. So you'll have three engineers. You have one of performance. So as we're flying, he has live data. They don't have, they have live data over there, but they can't see everything in detail. So we have the PSA that's going to go into the data and he's going to look at it. Is it what I was supposed to be getting? Do I have the information yeah. I need? Yeah. If he doesn't, yeah. he can ask for a redo because they're all on intercom yeah. and they're all talking to each other. He can yeah. have a redo. Then we would reformat and yeah. redo it again. When we do certification flight that we need to fly on board with the AASA, yeah. for example, or the FAA, yeah. normally they would sit on this screen. And seven hours or so of flight, you have a flight attendant caring about you no, uh, and drinks and coffee as I have the privilege in the aircraft. No, no flight attendant. Care about yourself. Huh? Uh, there was a bottle with you and you said They sandwich. have their lunch, they have lunch and that's it. Oh, then I prefer my, <laughs> prefer my treatment. I think I would prefer yours also. <laughs> yeah. So, could I see the cockpit? Yes, Good. let's go. I'll let you go first. Wow, thank you, Mark. May I take a seat in the first yes. of the seat? Yes. So you have an, a digital cockpit with an analog airplane? Yes, <laughs> that was Whoa. a challenge. So we had to upgrade the, uh, the aircraft the navigation system because what was happening is as you're doing flight tests, you're doing in a circuit. 
we had the old um, uh, Litnum um, gyros. So what was the, yeah, yeah. the INS? They couldn't ah, align they themselves. Drifted away. We always drifted. Yeah. So we had to upgrade, and now we're meeting also the uh, ADSB out. So all the latest requirements. So Whoa. it's all met. This aircraft uh, initially had three autopilot, so we downed it to two, two to be yeah. standard with the other one. So now we both oh, aircraft okay, that is are exactly the same. same. So when I was explaining to Whoa. you, this is your number two. It's your ah, experimental engine. That's why it is red. Eh? It's, it's red. not yours. I uh, don't touch it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this these three is the pilot. That one is the this engineer. Engineer. Yeah. But to ease the workload on the crew, once the aircraft is airborne, the gears are up. The crew through the test authority switch here mm -hmm. will push it in, and that transfers the control of the engine to the flight engineer in the bottom. Okay. So then now he can move it yeah. with no consequence whatsoever. Let's say there's an emergency and the crew wants to regain control of the engine, he's going to first start by doing a communication with the engineer in the ground. They will synchronize their throttle, he will take over control. Um, he has then again. And then he has again control of the engine. Yeah. So only what take off idea. landing that he's going to have. It. Take off and landing and the rest belongs to the engineer. Exactly. The and this engineering station, is this still living or, or, or needed actually? Do you always. fly with an engineer here? We have two flight engineers that are flying. They're, uh, they're as critical as the crew. Yeah. Because imagine you're flying a three engine. Yeah. So you're going at 40,000 feet. Yeah. You have pressurization to control, but they want the aircraft to go slow. Ah. So the engines are not bleeding as much. Yeah. So he has to manipulate a lot. The hydraulic becomes an issue, but he yeah. synchronizes everything. Yeah. It's very generated. You only have uh, three generators. Because one of the generators in the experimental okay. engine, yeah. we don't use the you power of that engine. Power, yeah. We dissipate it outside the aircraft. I'll show you when we go outside where, where, how we do it. So. so so, the captain has the overall command over his crew, so yes. also the engineers, the flight engineer. Let's say we're doing uh, uh, stalls. Yeah. And he really is concerned more about the temperature of the engine. We're going to display what he wants to see here. Yeah, yeah. So he can still see it, but he's not going to see all the 10,000 parameters. So normally the crews in the bottom will know first if they have an emergency, then he does, and then they will react. To shut the engine off, we're just taking the same system. We've yeah. modified the uh, discharge se sequence. Yeah. Okay. The other aircraft that you saw. Can you imagine you're flying and you have an engine and right, you have next, an engine just right the there? Makes you think of your Avril yeah. when you yeah, were flying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, I mean. the, the next project is to put a turboprop on top there also. On top, a turboprop? Turboprop. Yeah. That, but that needs a lot of clearance then, though. We yeah. will, the pylon will yeah. be made in function yeah. that we do uh, have the clearance. Wow! So, First time I sit in a in a uh, seven four seven. Are you serious? And then in one of your yeah. aircraft. Cool. May I see the outside then? Because it's a beauty. This aircraft. We're going outside. Okay, so here we've got uh, the electrical system that I was talking to you about. Yeah. That powers all the instrumentation on board the aircraft, so we don't touch the avionic. And we that's just true. remove it, we install the other one, and that's strong harnesses. And this is the uh, all the electronic box for the cockpit upgrade. In there. In there. You want to see May it? May I have a look in there? Yes, let's go. Because that is... Wow. That's real aviation. That it is. It is. Are these now the um, powering the new avionic system? This is these all ways. the new avionic system, yeah. yes. Communication, yeah. navigation, then we have laser refs, we have also the new fuel part indication system that's on the other side. Ah, yeah. yeah. So the fuel part is now digital, yeah. and it's, uh, we've upgraded all the aircraft. You'll notice that we still have the old uh, autopilot computers so and the, the uh, landing uh, down there. Yeah, and the landing logic computers. All the rest is new. But this is real aviation still. Yeah. Wow. Watch your head. As you see, the engine number two is installed there. When yeah. we do an engine change, not one program has the same profile of engine. So the challenge we had is, because you don't want to stress your wings attachment, because the wings attachment are modified. You don't see them, yeah. but uh, when we remove the engine and the pylon, we have the attachments that are modified. So we will basically take the equipment that we have, the uh, installation lifting equipment that we've designed. Okay, this is the ILE that I was talking to you about. So the way it works is we take the, you see the spigot? The engine cradle stand is going to be delivered to us. Yeah. It sits on the ILE. So ILE is that? Is the, it that the, floor? the structure. The structure itself. The structure. Right? Yeah. 
and then it sits on it. Yeah. And you have the screw jacks. You have the uh, they're all oh, electrical. They're the side, yeah. And what they do is they basically give the angle or tilt. Yeah. Because we have a tilter on it. You have an angle, and it tilts it to the angle of the wing. Okay. Because what you don't want when you're attaching the engine is you don't want to stress the wing because you have an experimental pylon that gets installed. And that, that's the case then that you basically can install the plugs almost by the finger with by no force that so it fits that much. Exactly. Okay, yeah. I understood. So it floats yeah. because we put a compressed air that goes and then you have cushions that raises. And you could just actually, when we built it the first time and we tried it, the surprise we had is that the floor has a four degree angle in case you it's have like a leak. Fluid leak. So the, 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 the ILE just started moving alone. Uh -huh. So we had to put resistance on it so it doesn't uh -huh. float, so we can yeah. control it more. That's why we have the tugger now to do it. Okay. So then when it slides, we bring it and it goes exactly where the engine is and the pylon. So we we're removing the pylon, yeah. everything is removed. Everything is removed. Like yeah. you see the white section in the back of the yeah. pylon? That was actually the fairing for the uh, BAC. Okay. Yeah. So uh, all the way to there, then we have our special strut, struts yeah. and everything is done. Uh, Mark, this was more than impressive what you have showed. Well, as a cockpit I've seen the first time, interior as well. To me, you know, as an airline pilot, yes, you get the product, you fly it, but your you engine is on or off. <laughs> and, and you really can't imagine what is all behind of work and, and also innovation, yeah, problem spot. solving until you get to the point that you really, as an airline pilot, you can start an engine. Do you feel safer now that you saw how we test them? Definitely. Oh, well, thank you very much. Yeah. Mark, thank you very much. Thank you for coming and see us. Thank you. Okay. Pleasure. Same way.